guys, just a warning, this video contains uh, information on how to make something that's potentially dangerous and probably, or possibly, illegal in your jurisdiction or area you live in, even your country. So please Google the information first before you make this. And certainly, if you do make this, be aware, once you take this outside of your house and you're among the public with these sorts of items, you're gonna get into trouble. Please, this is just for playing around with at home and experimental purposes. The first things to do, let's take our bug zapper out and have a, a little look at it. A little looksy here, a little looksy. In fact, I should just demonstrate this as a bug zapper before we go ahead and ruin it. See, I could have got two reviews out of this. I could have done a teardown and a review. But you know, I'm gonna sacrifice a whole day <laughs> worth of visit video because I'm not gonna do a bug zapper review because it's gonna be really difficult to go out and catch bugs. There aren't any bugs this time of year. Okay. I'm just gonna hold this up to the mic without trying to hit myself in the face. Just listen. Maybe you could hear that, I don't know. It's basically the whine, the, the very gentle whine of the actual unit. It's, uh, it's got some sort of transformers in there. Something's going on. Now, how do we test this without touching it? It's a bit scary. Um, we need something to emulate a berg, and I'm not brave enough to do it. Oh, shit! Yeah, that works. That actually, ah, oh, you can't, my finger smells burnt. Right, that held a charge once after I had, uh, had um, actually touched that. So that's good. That basically sent a jolt right up my arm and you proved the point. <laughs> yeah, and you have to be careful. It actually did give me a little bit of a burn. So I can't, I can't think of what we can actually use to put on here to really test this. Let me have a quick look around the back office, see if I can find something. Okay, back. I found a couple of LEDs here. We might be able to do something with those and see if they have any sort of effect on this. What I'm going to do is, hopefully this is insulated enough, is cull the LED in these pliers and try to have them bridge some of these circuitses. Ready? Whoa! Okay. Sheesh. <sighs> right. Take a look at that LED. Yep. I can smell a lot of burning smell too. That's something you don't want happening to you. This is not a toy. <laughs> Be very careful guys when you're messing with this. Right. First things first, safety first, I'm gonna pop the batteries out. Um, I was sort of imagining in my head all these fun things I could do, like putting bigger batteries in and messing around with it, but you know, that's really quite scary. Um, so yeah, don't do that. If in your country, and I don't even know if where I am, this is, a le this is legal or not, I would be very careful. I mean, we're effectively messing around with this um, for experimentation purposes, but if you went outside, after playing with one of these, there's a good chance you'll get in trouble, you know, so just be very careful, you know, it's 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 not a toy and if you went round with it and you did someone some harm, you're gonna get into big trouble. Alternatively, you could be saying, well, why are you showing us how to do this and mess around with this? I agree, um, it is a very tricky m moral ground here, moral dilemma, but you know, I'm just gonna go ahead because I trust you guys and to do the right thing. And if you really wanted to, you could probably go out and do something deadly anyway. There's a lot easier ways to harm people than make things like this. Right, so I'm bending this back. The, the mesh is actually three layers. You could see it's separated. It's got a conductive layer in the middle. Well, they're all conductive, but yeah, they've got a, a common layer in the middle and then two outer layers. So basically anything bridging it between any of the outer layers and the middle layer is gonna get fried. So I'm just gonna use, I've just got some regular scissors here. Chop those away because we're not gonna use this mesh part anymore unless we wanna make a tiny little barbecue. 
it's a bit sad to, to waste this to destroy it entirely but then it was in pound land and it only cost a pound so it doesn't break the bank let's have a look at the circuit yep very much uh, just a, a standard kind of charge circuit like you might get you know even in a I guess a, a, something that lights your barbecue or a camera flash I should be really you know watching my fingers here remember this all can still ca carry uh, current in it for a long time and you should really maybe short out these two things a lot of people use screwdrivers i've seen things blow up from doing that though so you might be careful you might be better using uh, i might try some uh, next time a bit of uh, this stuff because the ends of it will actually fry and just vaporize off probably not do as much damage so for this project you won't need both of these wires either you can just cut one of these straight off clean off there you go done and that's it that's basically a, the groundwork made just put that pcb back in again be very careful if it's charging you put your finger on that not only are you going to get a shock but you're going to get a burn i guarantee it you're going to get a burn scientifically we can have a lot of fun with this because we can use it to actually zap electronics so if you have a, a piece of electronics at home that you don't need anymore you could try experimenting zapping this on the various contacts and it's likely to take it out so you get the idea push the button here these two probes become live and then anything you touch you can zap with a little shock bang it's going to be unpleasant though you saw how big that arc is so i wouldn't do it to anything alive but there are certain things you could try like a gherkin because I can see there's an internal ledge, I think this will be far more effective if it is snubby. He says, completely grasping the PCB, potentially zapping his own palm out. He didn't remember to discharge it a moment ago. And you see the end now, we've got this square opening. I'll show you exactly what you've got to put in there. And as if by magic, the back office provides the solution. Look at that. I could not have asked for a better thing and it's quite a firm fit as well. So these are those construction blocks. Look at this. Now I could just arrow like that straight in. Perfect. So I'm gonna actually put the screws back in this main unit. Epoxy resin, if you haven't used it, it comes in two packs, two parts. Two parts and two packs. It's called actually two pack as well. Well, some people call it two pack. Let's put equal beads, please, of each kind. Pop the lid, turn it round, punches a hole in the top. Get your even Stevens. Oh, these, these tubes are really... Um, they're really shallow filled. You can see I had to squeeze quite a lot before I got any out of them. This comes with this nice applicator. Just make sure you mix that up rather well before you use it. Let's clean this. We're gonna use the big shovely end because we're gonna shovel a load on here. Shovelware. In fact, I'm gonna load it. I got two scoops on there, straight on. Straight on, bit more. Over the wires, over everything, it doesn't matter. Get in there. There we go. Look at that, good as gold. If I've got tiniest amount more resin, and I do, I'm just gonna post a bit here. Phew, that looks a bit menacing, doesn't it? I'm just gonna find a bit of tape to hold this in place. Nothing better than a bit of insulating tape. There we go. If I get a band around the middle, that'll hold it all nicely together while we're waiting for the resin to dry. But fortunately for us, we should be able to play with it right away. Whoa! So we have an LED an LED blow upper upper. 
That's a bit of fun, okay. Not sure if you can see it in the... It's quite dramatic actually. I'm going to turn a piece uh, this way. Hopefully you get a bit more contrast so you can actually see what's happening. But it, is, it is firing sparks off. So there you have it, your DIY LED blower up or whatever. You can try testing other components with it. I'm going to be very ginger with this. I might actually dismantle it because it is a little bit dangerous to have in the house. So yeah, there you go. Please feel free to leave your... Whoa, what did I just do? Did you just see that? I just touched those um, which after I'd used it. It's so easy to just do and you'll zap yourself. Let's see if the, epo the epoxy's just gone tacky, by the way. Let's just have a look. Let's just see if it's sort of held together. You can get to see what it will look like when you make one yourself. So don't use this on your any humans or any animal organic material. Well, maybe organic material like plants, that'll be fine. Because of course, if you puncture the skin, this will probably kill somebody. It only takes 30 milli uh, milliamps, I believe, to stop your heart and Frankly, nobody should be going out trying to stop anybody's heart, okay? Uh, if you get caught with something like this outdoors, it's probably going to be considered a lethal weapon or a, like a knife or something in your jurisdiction. And being caught with something on your person in public is probably likely to land you in a whole shit ton of trouble. So don't do that. And certainly don't mistreat your braid. Mistreated braid. Please leave your comments down below. Click subscribe when you want some to be notified and as ever, thanks for watching. Okay, I've had a little bit of fun with this messing around, but you know what guys, I think I'm just going to have to destroy it because it's far too scary to have lying around. It's a bit dangerous, you know, have your little bit of fun if you make one, have a bit of fun with it. But really, don't take it outside, don't mess with it, don't do it on people, just, you know, just do this. Done.